Hey, in today's video, I want to talk about something a little bit different to what my channel normally looks at. And I want to talk about the dangers of the hustle culture in photography and just the creative industry in general. Now, for those who aren't aware for whatever reason, when I'm talking about hustle culture, I'm not talking about actually working, but I'm talking about this new sort of mindset and framework of working where it's all, you've got to work, 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 you've got to put in the hours, it's all got to be like, go, 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 all at like 100%, 14 hour days, 16 hour days, seven days a week. And sure, I'm in this room here a lot, but I'm not working all the time. Actually, I don't work very much at all. And a lot of this culture stems from people trying to sell self-help books. So it's not necessarily coming from the right place. It's not always coming from a good place. Now, I think there's people out there who are good people who are bringing you know, advice in from a healthy place and from a nurturing way. But a lot of what seems to have taken off in the mainstream it's mostly life coaches spieling off nonsense and it's sort of slowly been adapted by the public and passed on and passed on like some sort of pyramid scheme. So here's what I've noticed. Now I'm on Instagram a lot, I love Instagram. It's where I share my behind the scenesy bits or the little tricks which don't really make up a video but are quite useful or just videos of my cat. I see a lot of photographers, I see a lot of photographers and creatives that like picture at the gym, timestamp, and the timestamp's important. They've got to let people know that they are working at five in the morning at the office, 7 a.m. They've got to let people know that 7 a.m. they're there at the office. And then it's time they're leaving, 9.30 p.m. You know, it's, it's all about how much work they're doing. And that is great if it's coming from a good place, but it's not most of the time. Most of the time they're busy for the sake of being busy. These long days aren't necessary. And what's gonna happen is you'll keep doing this work and doing this work and you do, you're being busy and you're working a lot. That's not in doubt here, but you're not working toward anything. You're just working for the sake of working. And then your energy starts to do this and your creativity starts to do this. And there's just no real hope to get out of this and you get addicted to it as well. It's like, um, it's like a, this concept of action faking. You know, you make a business card and you feel good that you've done something, but you've not actually done something. You've got a business card. What you should have done is phone that person you want to be working with and talk to them. That would be an action. You know, the 365 projects where you take a photograph every day and you feel good that you took your daily photograph. That photograph is meaningless and pointless. What would have been better is to sit down and work out where you are, who's above you, and what the difference is, and then sort of plot what you should be doing to get from where you are here to where you want to be. Not just going, I took another photograph today, check out my bokeh. It, it's not relevant, it's just it making you feel good and you get these doses of endorphins. And I know for a fact that if you watch one of these motivational videos, you feel great afterwards and you get this great bump, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. But you've not done anything apart from watch something in your box of shorts for 20 minutes. So there's a real danger to this hustle culture and this busyness because Doing this, being a creative, being a photographer, a designer, a director, an art buyer, whatever it may be, it's not about being busy. It's about knowing the right things. It's about creating the right things. And not just creating, but you have to create the right things for the right time, at the right moment, for the right people. It's far more complex than just grunt work. And this sort of hustle culture sort of produces grunt work. And that's not what we're about in this field. So what should we be doing? In my opinion, you know, go to the gym. I love exercise. I can't work if I don't exercise. I get depressed if I don't exercise. Um, every time I'm feeling a little bit low, I was just going, did I exercise today? No. We'll go for a half hour run, come back in, feel great. You know, a good diet, that does help. You know, some of these things from this new hustle culture that are coming in are really useful. But I think that's pretty much where I draw the line. After that, journaling, I don't journal. Sometimes I shout at myself in the mirror, but that's about as far as we go in that sense. Some people love it. It's not for me. Reading, very important, but don't read self-help books. Don't read these like guides to being a millionaire because that's not going to help you. Read Susan Sontag's essays on photography from when she was with Annie Leibovitz. Read books about creatives. Read the autobiography of Paul Smith because he is a fascinating man. Read about people doing things. Don't read books about people telling you how to do things. It's a very different thing. Look at picture books, wait there a second. I have no interest in sort of travel photography, but I have every issue of National Geographic because one day I'll be flicking through, I'll be looking around, I'll be looking at all these nice pictures and they're pretty pictures, it's not my cup of tea. I don't particularly like it and I'll see something and I'll be like, uh, oh, what if I bought this Bollywood party theme into a food image, but kind of made it into a pop art image? So I sort of bring the flowing fabric, you know, all these things, you start to pull these ideas together 
that's where you start to make the difference. There's actually got some stuff about the, the Nazis, and I'm fascinated by World War II, so that's probably why I've got it. But having that time to have a look through something and just go, oh, what do I like here? What's good? You know, I love the cover of National Geographic, that hard yellow framing the image is so good. Maybe I should be doing that for my next background. Maybe I should have a solid yellow and then cut in with a second background. You know, let's get rid of that. Little things like that, but you need the time to do that. So what I think is very important as creators is what I call breathing space. And that's the time you have to assess. And it's something I'm actually trying to hunt out at the moment because I've got a bit of a busy diary and that happens. It looks like I'm living the hustle culture right now. I'm not. It's just I have a lot of actual physical productive work going on right now. Next week, not so much. There'll be a lot of sitting around. So next week, I'm going to use that time to go, right, let me look at my portfolio. What do I like? What's not good? Let me look at the photographers I aspire to be working at a level of. What have they got that I haven't? Right, okay, let's get an action plan in place. What do I need to be working on? Who do I need to be working with to get that? Let's send those emails out, make those phone calls straight away. Right, let's look at dates in the diary. Let's book one in. I'm not booking 10 and I'm booking one in. We'll do that. I'm gonna shoot it, I'm gonna look at it, get it back from my editor and go, right, this is what I've achieved. Is it better than before? Yes or no? If not, why not? What did I do wrong? And it's that time, that's where you make the difference. You're not gonna hit 10 to 20,000 pound a day day rates by hustling and working nonstop hours. You will hit it by working smart and efficiently and with clear goals and a clear direction. So simply coming in and going, I'm gonna paint the studio today. I could paint the studio today, but it's fake busy. It's being busy for the sake of it. I am not going to be a better photographer by painting my studio. Likewise, I could go to five marketing events today in my city. Well, I couldn't because we're on lockdown, but you get the gist. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna make me a better photographer. And the most important thing in photography is being a better photographer. Yes, you need to be likable. You have to have the business sense or the rest of it, but that is a small percentage when we're talking about getting the big paychecks. Perhaps if you're doing the local headshot circuit, being likable is better than being good. But for most of us, we need to be as good as possible because we're literally selling our work. And if our work sucks, no one's buying it, no matter how much hustle culture you're plugging away at each day. Now, obviously there's, there's another side to this and it's the dosser. I think that's a British word. It's someone who doesn't really do anything. They sit in the cafe all day. They're like, oh, I'm a creative. Oh, my art, you know, and that doesn't work either. You know, unless you happen to have some vision and talent beyond anything anyone's seen for decades. And there are very few people in the world like that. That is not a good way to work. You have to turn up. I'm in here every day, Monday to Friday, often Saturday and Sunday I'm in here, but I'm not pointlessly working. And a lot of the time I'm watching, I'm consuming, I'm reading, I'm viewing. You know, there's some little bits I have to do that boring admin stuff, but I have to have that brain space and that separation where it's not a hundred miles an hour nonstop trying to get to this goalpost. There has to be a bit where I go, right, let's have a look. Where are we? What have we achieved this week? You know, if it's I've painted my walls, I've got business cards and I've read a book about how to be a successful entrepreneur, that is not gonna help my career at all. If I can step back and go, right, this week, what have I done? Well, I've got my invoices off, that's good. Everyone has to do that. I've managed to come up with three new shots that I want to take, with a reason why I want to take them, with a clear, concise progression to the next level. I want to take these photos in this style. I want to work with these retouches, these stylists, to be able to, you know, amalgamate this vision into something which is bringing me closer to my goal. Not, I went out and I took a pretty picture because you've got to take a picture. Or I got every one of my photos done for my 365. Or I think there's a roll of film where you shoot a roll of film every week. It's like, that's wasteful. Unless you have a particular project, which, you know, perhaps merits that. But most of us, if you're doing that sort of thing, you're just doing it for the sake of going, I've got something for social media. So what's the point in all of this? Well, firstly, everyone needs to relax a little bit. And we need to be very wary and careful of these people who are showing us this like hustle life. I did a studio tour recently. My studio does not look like these pretty YouTube studios. It's not these beautiful white floors and walls and ceilings. This is a place of work. This is where the grunt work does get done. This is where we paint and build things. But it's also where I sit down and I relax and I have the blinds open, I have the sun coming through the trees and it's peaceful and I can read, read like, I don't read, I look at pictures, <laughs> who am I kidding? I, I read, <laughs> I look at pictures, I tear them out and I stick them together and I get that creative juices flowing. So we need to be wary of this and falling into that trap, you know, 
I could watch motivational videos on YouTube for hours and feel absolutely buzzing. And I know this because I've done it before. Like so someone's moving the lift outside, that's probably very loud. I hope my mic's close enough. I could watch these motivational videos all day on YouTube and I'd feel buzzing. I could go to the gym at five in the morning. I could be busying myself all day. But at the end of the year, I will just have the exact same stuff I already have. So making sure that when we're working, we're working towards something. There's a reason for it. And yes, I, I live by the feast and famine rule. Once I have a project going, and I've done that brain separated space, I've stepped back and looked at it. Once I hit the ground running and work, I can be in here for 48 hours solid working, but then I'll sleep for a day, and then I'll have two days of chilling out and getting myself back to normal, and then I'll start again with the, the space and the headspace to be able to actually think. We don't work in a sort of area where it's, you know, we're not doing the same mundane, thoughtless task over and over and over and over, and sometimes we have to throw that into our lives to give ourselves a break, but we're trying to create something each time, so having that headspace you know, to be able to go into those intense sprints for work and then step out again, it's really important. So I hope that's been of use to you. Let me know your thoughts below. This is a half-baked idea at this stage, um, but it's something I'm interested in because I can sort of see it unfolding in front of me on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram. And it does worry me that a lot of the younger photographers and some of the old ones too are sort of buying into the hustle culture. And I think it's something we need to monitor as a community of creatives, just to make sure people are heading in the right track because we're not in competition with each other. This is something where we're all trying to live a life that we want to live, that we feel is the right life for us. And I, th I think everyone deserves to be able to have that. So making sure that you're checking in on people and just going, look, mate, why are you doing this all day? This is completely pointless work. What you need to be doing is stepping back and going, how am I going to be a better creative, a better photographer? Not how am I going to be busy and fill a 16 hour day, five days a week. If you're enjoying these videos and you want to learn more about the business of photography, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time.